Wow, what a professional opening to this segment. I buy old records. I'm Max Stevens. I buy them, I talk about them, blog about them, go out and look for them. Sometimes I don't find them. Sometimes I find tons of them. I brought home uh, as many as 30,000 at one time. I know that's just peanuts compared to fines that other people make. But that's other people. <clears throat> so, uh, had a question. What kind of uh, turntables do you use? Well, that's uh, a neat question, one that I'll try to make up an answer about. What I do, I use whatever's at hand. It's not really that simple. There are things I like in a turntable, things I dislike in a turntable. But right now, I will show you what I am currently using or have on hand. We're going to start with just behind my office desk, way back up in under there. It's an old uh, Califone type school turntable. I haul that thing out when I get rough shape uh, 78s to have to paw through that I don't want to use my uh, Califone needle on just yet. It'll plow through anything. It just gives me an idea of if it's playable or not, etc. Those are made for kids to use in school and they're really tough. They will wear out in time though and uh, every couple of years uh, one will quit and I'll just have to find another. They're cheap and plentiful. Keep that in mind when you're out looking for, for turntables and such. What I use here, I've got three that get worked out regularly. This is your cheap run-of-the-mill ion. It's got an ecstatic cartridge, I think is what that is. And it's just $70 or so. El Cheapo, it really is. It's not for critical listening. What that is for is for critically playing, like with the school player records that come in, and I just want to throw them on something, give it 10 seconds of listening, because normally I'll leave my uh, battery powered players out in the car. And uh, because that's where they need to be. If I bring them in the house, I'm going to forget them. And then I go out on a record trip. I'm 200 miles away and I have no record player. Then you'll hear a string of profanity that will just, it, it's amazing. Um, so this is just kind of a, uh, Cheap thing, it lets me know whether a record's a parakeet training record, or if it's an accordion solo, or maybe it's a slap bass rockabilly thing that I've never heard before, but that will change my, wife, my life. Not changing my life. Change my life and my pocketbook for the better. A lot of times, I'll do this. I'll just put the uh, lid down on it, and I'll stack 78s or 45s on top until it's needed. That's about its true function. Over here is the press, uh, the uh, yeah, Presto OK K8, 1936. It's one year younger than my dad. He's almost 85. That tells you this one's almost 84. Redone by Alberto Tello down in in Austin, Italian friend of mine who knows what he's doing when it comes to uh, tube powered things. That's all he'll work on. If it's powered by tubes, he's in. He can do it especially if it's ancient. I'm um, cutting a lot of good 78 records with this, and uh, it's just uh, my favorite thing on earth that I own, pretty much. And then we get to my favorite player I've ever owned. Right there is the, uh, it's the Califone Promenade, number 25V-8A. Wow, this came out in the early 50s, I suppose. And it's for square dancing. Yeah, the original DJs were square dance DJs. And uh, they would uh, have a whole bunch of people there just raring to dance. He'd also have uh, two microphone inputs on this one, which is really good. My friend Mark Lee Allen's got the uh, sister model that has one microphone input. Well, this one has two. I guess that makes mine better. I don't know. He's got a good one, though. He turned me on to these. Got to give him credit. Anyway, he would uh, DJ. He'd announce. He'd call, you know, swing your partner by the legs or something like that. And then they, the dancers would do what he said. It was quite marvelous. And uh, I use this 
for anything I, I want to play and throw up on Facebook because it'll, it'll, it's adjustable. This thing will go all the way down to 16 RPM or lower, 33, 45, 78. It's got the built-in strobe, which tells me when I'm bang on, and it tracks heavy. I wouldn't play my DA Hunt on here, but I would play about anything else and enjoy the sound. This is one of my homemade records right here. Low fidelity to start with. Enhanced low fidelity because of the uh, player being on 78. But I've been getting great cuts out of this machine over here and played back on that. That's the way they should be played. 78 stylus, not any little old thin A-static thing that are on these modern turntables. And uh, heavy tracking. It'll take a rough shape 78 and you'll wring the last bit of good sound out of it. Might ought to record it when you do though because you might get the last little bit of sound on it and there'll be nothing left when you're done. It's not quite that bad, no matter what other people might say. A lot of people that criticize these say, oh, they track too heavy. They've never owned one. You gotta enjoy this stuff as well. Well, let's go look at the other one. Here's one I keep back in the back of my shop in a very special place, the Audio-Technica Direct Drive with the adjustable tracking, the weighted to or the tone arm weight that's adjustable, the interchangeable head, everything. Oh man, I keep it back here because I don't use it. I don't like it. I used it, had it set up right, didn't like it. I'd play a 78 on this, set up properly. Then I'd play it on the Caliphone. The Caliphone was head and shoulders above in sound quality. Mm, F that S right in the A as they say. But, oh, and that's a nice little old steel guitar I picked up. I got a B-A-D-D. It's got only one string. I've just, I got it for sale. It's a late 40s, probably a 47 or so. Uh, magnetone, I think. So anyway, this one, I'll dig it out again at some point and play with it some more. But after playing the Caliphone, I don't like it. Ah, another episode we'll talk about reel to reels of various kinds. There's another one of my little school players. It's an Audiotronics, about the same as the, uh, the Caliphones and things like that. There's another Caliphone Square Dance. It's a 70s model. Uh, it's got a slight tone arm problem. I've got to try to cure. I'm not sure if I can or not. And then the last one is that ancient Newcomb over there. Plays great, uh, tracks at about 27 to 30 grams. So uh, yeah, I don't use it. Well, that's what I'm using right now. I hope y'all are enjoying what you're seeing, and I hope you're enjoying your records. That's what they're there for. You know, uh, most of my records I'll get out and play. A lot of records I play the hell out of them. And that's a good thing. You got to play them. So, enjoy my mess. I'm sure some of, some of y'all have uh, comparable messes. I'm sure some of y'all are just cringing like everything, going, ah! But this room mutates. I'm fixing to move, hopefully, in about thirty or 40,000 uh, records up above in the little attic part. I keep it air-conditioned. But I'm moving boxes now, so I've got a big pyramid of empty boxes. Because I'm going to go load up all those records and bring them home at some point. Hope you all have fun. I know I have. I'll see you fine folks later.